Question seven begins by describing a car with a mass of m. It has a constant net force of f acting on it, and it moves a distance x in the direction of this force, and that the final velocity of the car is v. So it asks us to write down an equation, first of all, for the work done by the force. Well, we know that work done is equal to force multiplied by the distance moved in the direction of the force. So in this case, f multiplied by x. And we know that the equation relating force and acceleration is f equals m a. Part ii is a tricky derivation question. It's asking us to show that the kinetic energy of the car uh, is given by the equation ek equals a half mv squared. The hence here is very important because uh, it's giving you a very big clue that you need to use what you've written down in the previous question. So we've got our two equations here, work equals force times distance moved in the direction of the force and that force equals mass times acceleration. The kinetic energy ek is going to be equal to the work done on the car because all of that work done is being transferred into kinetic energy. So we can say that EK equals FX. And if we substitute F equals MA into our equation, we get EK equals MAX. Now, we've got a situation here where we've, we've got an acceleration and a displacement, but we want a velocity. So we need to think about our SUVAT equations. So we need to find a SUVAT equation. Let's write down uh, what we know for our SUVAT. So S here uh, is our displacement. That is what we're calling X. U is our initial velocity. Well, we know the car is starting from rest, so that's zero. V is our final velocity, which is what we're interested in. We're going to keep calling that V. A is our acceleration, which again is A and t we don't care about. So the equation we need is v squared equals u squared plus 2as. However, we're calling our displacement here x, so it becomes 2ax. We can immediately lose our u squared term because uh, the initial velocity is 0. So we have v squared equals 2ax. Let's rearrange that so we we're left with ax equals v squared divided by 2 and now we can substitute that in to replace ax in our equation here so ek the kinetic energy is equal to mass times v squared divided by 2 or just for completeness let's write that out in the same form as the equation ex equals a half m v squared Part B, the braking distance of an empty van travelling at a steady speed on a level road is 50 metres. The van is now fully loaded with goods and travels at the same speed on the same road. Explain whether or not the braking distance will be the same. Assume that the driver applies the same braking force. So we have a situation here where the kinetic energy of the car is going to be equal to the work done by the braking force. So we can say that half mv squared is equal to f of x. Now the x here is important because that is our braking distance. It's the distance moved in the direction of the force. So we know that the mass is increasing. We know that the velocity is constant. We know that the force is constant. And we want to find out the effect on x. So we can say here that the mass is proportional to x because v is constant, f is constant, and the half is obviously a constant as well. So we're left with a relationship here where the m is proportional to the x. So we can say, therefore, the braking distance will be greater.